everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. It is a day we've been waiting for for a long time here on the homestead. Actually here at the farm property, it is the day that we are hoping to plant our garden. Now, yesterday we got a bunch of work done. Uh, we had talked with you in a previous video that even though we use the landscape rake or the rock rake to get out most of the rocks from the garden, kind of along the, the walkways, there were still quite a few rocks to pick up. Yeah, quite a few is an understatement three tractor bucket loads full that we still had to pick by hand on top of what we pulled out with the rake. Anyway, we did that yesterday and we also put down the woven weed fabric. Yeah, you can see it behind us. We got the entire garden area covered in our woven weed fabric. Now, if you remember last year, we switched to using the 15 foot wide weed fabric. So that has made the job quite a bit easier but it was still a pretty eventful day yesterday <laughs> because it was windy. can see we put down four pieces of the 15 foot wide weed fabric. There is an open area at the very back of the garden that's where we plan to grow corn this year. Right and we're actually going to try something a little different with the corn this year. In the past we've just put, we've just not used weed fabric at all for the corn but this year we're actually going to try putting the three foot wide weed fabric because we still have a lot of that left over from when we used to use it. We're gonna try putting that in the walkways of the corn to see if we can help with some weed suppression in the walkways. Now that may not all happen today, but that is our plan for this summer for the corn. Right. This year we're actually gonna be trying a variety that we've never tried before. So you'll have to stick around to hear about that. Yeah, it's actually a variety. I'll give you a little hint. It's a variety that was developed by a friend of ours and many of you may know who it is. We'll get to that later in this video, but for now, there's one thing that we need to still do in here before we actually get to planting, and that is that we need to install all of our trellises. Now this year, we're also doing something a little bit different for trellises. We have always used, uh, what's that called? Woven wire? Woven fencing, yeah, Woven, field fencing. Yeah, um, and we used the same pieces for like five plus years and they were getting stretched out. So this year we've switched and we're gonna be using uh, cattle panels. Right. Most of them have been left over from things. They're old whatever but they still have life in them right. we're going to be using those this year so that's the first thing that we need to do is put our t-posts in install our actual pieces of cattle panel and then it'll be time to start planting our very first full-size garden 
here on the farm property. Well, our trellises are all up and it is almost time to start planting. But before we do, I thought I would go kind of row by row through with you through the garden and tell you what we're gonna be planting and why. So this first row is actually gonna be flowers this year. Sarah's gonna plant, I believe, marigolds there. Um, and really we're just doing that mostly for decorative reasons, but there are some beneficial reasons to have marigolds in your garden as well for insect control and some other things but mostly it's going to be for just to make it a little more colorful. This first row, the reason we have the holes here actually is because in past years, we've actually done these first two rows as tomatoes. This year, we're only gonna be doing a row and a half instead of two full rows of tomatoes, uh, partially because the last few years we've grown so many tomatoes that we've done so much canning and freeze drying that we have a lot extras, so we don't need quite as many this year. Also, we have quite a few tomatoes growing in the greenhouse this year, and we have one less person in our house now that our daughter has gone to college most of the year. So we don't need as many tomatoes this year, but we're still growing a lot. So this first row is gonna be all tomatoes. It's gonna to be a mix of the Jet Stars, the Opulka, and the Salvaterra Select. The Jet Star is a good slicing tomato, and the other two are both uh, sauce tomatoes for making tomato sauce and things like that. The second row is going to be half tomatoes. It's also going to be a mix of different tomatoes. And then the other half of this row is going to be all peppers. We're doing Emerald Giant for green peppers. We're doing the Craig's Grande jalapenos. We're doing the uh, Nada Peños. We're doing some Ancho Chilies. And Sarah's favorite, the Ajvarsky, which is a red roasting pepper. The row after that is going to be our green beans. This is going to be an entire row of green beans. We like the contender green beans. Now, in the past, we've done about a row and a half of these in the garden, but we have about the equivalent of a half a row in the greenhouse this year, so we're just doing one row in the garden this year. The row right after the green beans is going to be something that 
we've done in the past, but we haven't done for several years, and that is edamame. Edamame is a type of soybean that you can eat uh, just steamed or, or fresh, and most of the time we try to be soy free in our house because almost all soybeans in our part of the world here are GMO and we try to stay away from GMOs. But the edamame is a non-GMO soybean and it's one that we can grow ourselves and just pick and eat fresh. We just like it as a snack. We steam it and eat them with just a little salt on it. It's a very good snack. The row after that is going to be one of my favorite things. Obviously I don't like it as much as tomatoes, but runner up to the tomatoes is going to be the Clemson spineless okra. Uh, we're going to be doing half a row of okra, and then on the other half where the trellis is, that is going to be our cucumbers. This year we're just doing one variety of cucumbers, our favorite. It's called Market More, and it's always a great producer. These next two rows you can see are spaced pretty far apart. These obviously are plants that are going to get pretty big. We're doing four different things back here this year. Uh, in this row here, we're doing half of it as watermelons. We're doing two of our favorite varieties of watermelons again this year. We're doing the strawberry watermelons, which is my absolute favorite. And then we're also doing the Sweet Dakota Rose, which we also did last year. They did really well also. I didn't think they were quite as flavorful, but they were very good. And the nice thing is they start to produce at different times, so it gives you kind of a longer watermelon season. And then on this half, we're doing a type of cantaloupe. Uh, it's called Honey Rock. We haven't tried that before, but it's supposed to be very good. And then in this very back row here, this is where we're doing squash this year. We're doing our uh, Canada Crookneck squash that you see us grow every year. And we're also going to be doing a spaghetti squash. Now you may wonder why this year we're not doing the Canada Crookneck squash on a trellis. The truth is that really, Half of them end up growing on the ground anyway, even when we do them on a trellis. So we figured this year, instead of putting the trellis up, we would just let them all grow on the ground. They're so resistant to the squash bugs that it really doesn't matter. We haven't seen a problem with them being on the ground. So we think that it's going to do just fine. And then in this very back section of the garden where we haven't put any weed fabric yet, this is where we're going to be planting corn. I told you guys earlier we're going to be doing a different variety this year. In the past, we've always done the peaches and cream, which is a hybrid sweet corn that we really like. But this year, we're trying something that one of our friends sent us. You may know Danny from Deep South Homestead. He has his own variety of corn that he's developed over the years called Danny corn. And that's what we're going to be trying back here this year. We're not doing a whole lot of it because this is going to be an extremely busy summer for us. Now we just want some for fresh eating. So we think we could get about four or five rows of the Danny corn back here, which would be plenty for us for fresh eating. And we're just super excited to try it. Uh, I see Danny grow it every year and it looks fantastic. So we're excited to try it and see how it does here in Missouri. So you guys, that's what's going in the garden this year, along with everything we've grown in the greenhouse and everywhere else. This is going to be a lot of food for our family. We're excited. We're gonna get started planting and we'll show you guys as we progress. So the first thing that we're going to do to get ready for planting is drill all of our holes for our transplants. Again, these first two rows, the tomatoes and peppers. Uh, I like to use one of these. Um, this is probably the only time you'll ever see me using an electric drill instead of a cordless drill. The electric drills just have more power and I like that for drilling these holes. If you don't have one of these augers, you need to get one. It saves you so much time versus hand digging all of your holes. Just put your auger in. Just like that, you've got your hole for your tomato plant. I'm gonna go down the row and do all of these. Sarah's gonna start laying out the plants and we're gonna get busy. We're gonna get this whole garden knocked out today.
So it is exciting to get started planting this garden. And starting with my favorite thing to grow, Kevin's favorite vegetable to eat, which is tomatoes. And we're gonna just review with you how we plant tomatoes. It's been the same for years, but it's been working well. That's why we keep doing that. So Kevin has uh, drilled a hole that is, it's pretty deep. It's uh, you know, up to my wrist. And we are going to plant these tomato plants deep down in the ground because any soil that touches the stem here will grow more roots. And that will just provide a really great uh, base for this tomato plant. We're starting with Jet Stars, which are our favorite slicing tomato. We're just gonna turn it upside down and get it out of this pot a little bit. It doesn't appear to be very root bound. I'm just gonna tickle the roots a little bit. We're gonna put that down in the hole, but first, we are going to add our secret ingredient to growing fantastic plants in the garden. Every time we grow a plant that's a transplant like this, we put a quarter cup of rabbit manure down in the bottom of the hole. Now this year we have powdered that dried rabbit manure. Really either way works just fine, but we powdered it to sell at the farmer's market um, so that I don't know, I think it was just more appealing to people in a powdered form. Uh, we used just a kitchen blender. You guys asked a ton of questions. How did we blend up and make this powdered rabbit manure? We just used a kitchen blender, which is no longer the smoothie blender. I'll just tell you that. We don't use it in the house anymore, but it worked really well as long as the manure was dry. So we are going to be using one quarter of a cup of the rabbit manure, powdered or not. Normally I just use a couple handfuls, but I decided to measure it so that people at the farmer's market would know how much to use. We're gonna put that right in the bottom of the hole. And we're gonna plant this tomato plant right on top of that rabbit manure. Some of these leaves need to come off because they will be down in the ground. So we'll put that down in there, just like that. And then we're just gonna backfill with the native soil here. Make sure that there aren't any air pockets down in there. That's all there is to that. Once we have them all in, we'll give them a drink. And in the next few days, we are expecting quite a bit of rain. So this entire garden will receive a very wonderful drink of some rain. So that's all there is to it. This is how we're gonna plant every one of the tomatoes, every one of the peppers, and really anything that we have that is a transplant that's going into the garden. Well, you guys, this ended up being a bummer. <laughs> uh, it's raining. It's, it's raining pretty darn hard. Yeah. When we came outside this morning, this was supposed to be, well, today and Friday, today's Monday, these are supposed to be the only two days out of the week with no rain. So we had 
high hopes that we could get the garden in today, but we got all of our tomatoes in and then it just started to pour. Yeah, and uh, we worked as much as we could in the rain, but if we, I mean, it's hard enough that if we keep working out there, we're just gonna be soaked. Right, and, and we can't uh, have any of our camera equipment out there. Right. And you guys, we looked at the radar. It looks like it's supposed to now rain starting now oh, pretty until, much all day today yeah, and then yeah. for the next three days straight. Yeah. So we're back at square one <laughs> as far as the garden goes, probably until the end of the week. I feel like this has just kind of been the case for us. This entire spring. All spring. Just roadblocks to get the garden in. Right. Um, the good news is that we have the greenhouse where we yeah. are now. And you guys, if we continue to have years like this where there's so much rain, the greenhouse is going to be even more important. So we weren't planning on doing kind of a greenhouse tour for you today, but we thought we would end this video on a high note by showing you just how great the greenhouse is doing. Okay guys, I'm gonna show you some of the exciting things that are happening in the greenhouse. The first one is here. Now, this might not look like a whole lot. This is basil. We have four basil plants in the greenhouse. What's exciting about this is that this is ready for a first harvest. When I harvest basil, I harvest like two thirds of the plant at a time. So I'm gonna be doing a harvest probably later this week so we can have um, pesto pasta for dinner. And I will cut, like I said, two thirds of this plant. And what that's going to do is it is going to, um, this plant is going to like explode out. It's going to get super bushy. Right now you can see it's looking kind of long and lanky. And as soon as I cut right above these uh, leaves here, there are going to be a ton of new branches just filling this branch right here. And every single one of these branches is going to do that. It's just going to get big and bushy. So it's exciting that it's time to uh, take a first harvest off of these guys so we can start enjoying some pesto. But it's also exciting that it's just gonna get huge after that. Basil loves the heat. It's a perfect thing for the summer and it's a perfect thing for warm weather. Let's move on. Kind of along the same lines as the basil, I just recently cut back or pruned some of our pepper plants in here. You can see here that really just looks like I chopped half this plant off. See right there? And pretty much I did just kind of chop half this plant off. And that will prevent these pepper plants from getting long and lanky. And at each one of where these leaves are, it will produce another branch. So it'll get nice and bushy. So that is one thing that we're doing uh, with actually half of these peppers. Once these other pepper plants get bigger, I'll do the same thing to those. I also plan to do that in the garden whenever we can get the pepper plants planted. Now I can't walk by the tomatoes without saying something about them. They're doing fantastic on this new way that we're starting to tie them up. You can see that these indeterminate plants are just climbing and climbing. These four are determinate, so they're not gonna get so tall, but they are very much benefiting from the support of these uh, ropes up here to this pole. I'm gonna tell you today that we have already done a first harvest of the zucchini plants. Actually, we have harvested two good sized zucchinis and there are two more on there. It is so exciting to have the very first harvests coming on. This is, there's one here. Uh, there's one back here. And gosh, just a bunch of them starting. This harvest, these zucchini are like a month early, at least, maybe more than if we were to be planting them into the ground. Also another first harvest in here, we had a first cucumber off of our cucumber plants. Now this is a bush type cucumber, so the branches shouldn't run as long as a standard cucumber plant. So more to come soon for the cucumbers too. Another thing we're excited about that we haven't even shown you guys is that we have planted a couple buckets of leeks. Now there is a couple that has been coming to the farmer's market for a couple years and have bought uh, plant starts from us, bought seedlings. And this year when they came back to buy plants again, they brought us a nice big bundle of leek starts. 
Now, they are from Germany, and when they lived in Germany, like, leeks were super common to cook with, and, like, as common as onions are here. But when they moved to the United States, they couldn't find leeks like they were wanting. Like, the grocery stores, they just don't have many, and what they do have are super expensive. So they've started growing their own. This year, they wanted to share those leeks with us, and so we are growing two buckets full of leeks. We've never grown leeks before, and they are doing just so well. These guys have been um, in these buckets for maybe a couple weeks. They've all come to life and they're doing great. We're so excited that they shared them with us and that we're going to have a new experience growing leeks. Now the last really exciting thing that's going on in the greenhouse right now is right next to me. Look at here. This is a green bean flower. All of our green bean buckets, the contender bean buckets, they're all flowering. And that means pretty soon we're gonna have fresh green beans to eat. I would say probably in a week or two, we're gonna be able to harvest our very first green beans out of the greenhouse and have some for fresh eating. I wanna show you this one in particular. I just saw it. Look it. There are three of these beautiful flowers all in one cluster soon to be three green beans. You know, we normally don't get green beans in the garden until like the really hot part of the year, probably uh, mid to late July, right before the tomatoes start turning red. And so you guys, we're like two months ahead of schedule with green beans. This is super encouraging and really, really exciting. Like I haven't told you that before. It's all very exciting what's going on here. Our experiment is going very well, growing summer plants in the greenhouse. We couldn't be more thrilled. Well, this day may not have turned out as planned, but you guys, there is not a single thing that we can do to change that. At least we have the greenhouse to work in. Everything is doing great in here, and we just have to wait until another day. I'm happy that we got all the tomato plants in. Right. That is... That's good. That's a good That's a good start. Right. And the good news is now we have all of our woven ground cover down. We have all of our trellises up. Right. So when we do get another nice day, we can just get right back to planting. And it really won't take us that long to get the rest of the garden planted. You guys, this is just the way it goes. Sometimes we get frustrated, but we know that we'll find a way. It's not too late to put our garden in. It's not too late for you to put your garden in. We right. just need to keep remembering that. Right. So you guys, we hope that the weather is giving you some good days where you are. Uh, we're just gonna keep plugging along here. We hope that you enjoyed today's video, even though we didn't get to do everything that we wanted to do. And hey, if you're enjoying our channel and you're enjoying our content and you're not a subscriber yet, we sure hope that you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And as always, the absolute best way that you can help us here on our homestead is just to share our videos with other like-minded people on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.